On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, a deep dive on the SIG cross. I found Freeze's gun. The election mystery continues in Island Babe 1234. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 195 of the John 1911 podcast. So, uh, how's it uh, going so far uh, for December the 2nd, Freeze? Well, um, not too bad, I guess. I mean, I'm feeling better. I've been under the weather the past week or so. Yeah, so it's been a lot going on. You've had some some issues, and you know, we're having a lockdown, COVID, you know, disruptions over here in the state of Ohio, which is affecting all of us. And so, I guess we'll we'll tell the viewers that uh, right now it is one thirty in the morning uh, on Dece- December the second. Um, and the reason it's 1.30 is uh, I, to get stuff done in the uh, armory, I have been working nights, so uh, special projects. So I basically have been, you know, we take care of normal stuff during the day and then say by about 9 o'clock to about 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting a bunch of stuff done and then uh, rolling back in at 11 in the morning. So that's going to be the schedule for the foreseeable future, but unexpected development happened within the past hour. And I sent you a text message on it. I have found your 1911. I saw that. Um, I wasn't worried. I knew it would turn up, Um, you know, uh, but Hey, look with the armory move, um, misplacing one firearms, not a bad that's not that's not too bad. Actually, it turns out we had misplaced two firearms. I just didn't even realize the second firearm had been misplaced cuz I found <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to probably do a complete I mean, I've looked at everything cuz I've been reconfiguring gun racks all week and uh I see nothing missing, but I'm going to have to do a down and dirty inventory and just go ahead and do a one for one and check serial numbers and then organize. Cause right now, one of the problems is with the new move, we don't have stuff broken down into groups like we would normally. Yeah. We have so many guns. The goal was just get them up on racks, get them off the floors. Well, now it's time to start uh, doing a, uh, a more in depth inventory. Yeah. So we've been, you know, we've been working on rack systems and ordering more stuff. And so anyway, um, I was working on uh, supp- uh, the suppressed, t- uh, suppressing, putting 22 long rifle on the Gemtech upper, and uh, I shot it in the parking lot. And uh, in case anyone was curious, uh, if 20, if uh, if CCI, I don't know what what's the what's the what's the CCI 22 ammo we always bought Stinger Stinger. If you think um, the large expansion chamber on a Gemtech Integra integrally suppressed upper would make a difference for uh, CCI Stinger 22 ammo as far as keeping it quiet? The answer would be no. Well, I don't I don't know if we have a, any in the armory, but I have a, a bunch of it here in, in my garage. But I've got some CCI standard velocity 22 long rifle ammo that, um, that uh, we can try through it. I mean, Stinger's hot. I mean, this, it, that's hot, hot ammo. Yeah. You know, so I, I think the CCI standard velocity will, um, I think it'll function in the gun. The only, my only concern with uh, standard velocity is does it have enough, uh, will it cycle the bolt? But it, as long as it feeds and cycles the bolt, I think it'll make a big difference. Yeah, we had bought, oh my God, I don't even know how many just oodles and oodles of rounds of PCI Stinger to run some I, conversion kits. We, we, we bought that years ago and it was either three or 5,000 rounds, if I believe correctly. Yeah. And we don't shoot them uh, much 22. And like, I've even given, I gave, I've given a thousand rounds of it away, but, um, uh, the, uh, it, I, I did well. Cause tonight I had to go looking cause I had to put the gem tech together I found your gun. I found a second gun um, in a bag that was from the truck that we take out to the you know to the range before the move. I also had to find the ammo because I you know where's the 22 ammo? I, I kind of knew where it was, so I I went and found it. And uh, 
I had found we have some green tag, we have some Ely, um, we have uh, CCI standard, we've got a bunch of the Stinger stuff. We don't have anything subsonic. So uh, we'll try the, the regular. The green tag in the Ely is more performance ammo. I wouldn't run that through the Gem Tech. That's just a waste of good ammo. Yeah, that 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 ammo was bought for the uh, Winchester Fifty Two project that we never got around to. Yeah, yeah. There's just a whole lot of projects where, you know, it's been it's been a hell of a year. So, uh, yeah, it's you know the 2020 dumpster fire, as I refer to it as. Mm. You know. Oh my God, it's been terrible. So hence, hence why we're doing a podcast at one thirty in the morning. And, uh, <laughs> and you know yeah. what? Look, I got to tell you something because I like getting up early and going to bed early. But you know me. I mean, you know me. You knew me way back when, and it took me to the switch to a nighttime schedule was instantaneous. It's just mentally, I'm like, yep, no problem. I could literally go back to work in thirds and stay up all night and be in a, uh, a, a, a what did you call it, a sparkly vampire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, the thing is, when when you're a, uh, you know, a, a third shifter, you know, or a, a, a night guy, I mean, when when you do it for so many years, and it takes years to get used to it, but but once you get acclimated to it, it's kind of hard to go back to being a day walker, but <laughs> when you do switch, man, it's super easy to go back to being a third shift guy. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it probably takes years off of your life, but it's easy to adapt to once you're used to it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm glad I can still do it. I don't know if I should be proud of it. I mean, I'm 49 <laughs> years old. It's like, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, the life I used to lead at night, I mean, you know what it's like, dude. You oh, know, yeah. I still do it. You still do it. And, you know, I'm hoping you I, – I mean, I mean, I told you the other day I, I wish you would retire. I've told you that a couple times. I haven't yeah. said this publicly in a podcast, but I do worry that eventually one day you're going to get got, and I wish you would retire. So, Well, I mean, I – that may come sooner than I than I like. I mean, mentally, I'm not ready to retire, but physically, I may be forced to retire. Yeah. So, like, I'm so. not trying to I'm not trying to lean in on on that with you know because you've had some issues this past week. But hey, yeah. I'm thinking you know with Joe Biden as president, I could probably get on some kind of sweet sweet disability thing to where I can get paid like three times my salary and not have to work. Hell, you could get paid three times your salary and then also have an Oxycontin dope business on the side with all the dope they would prescribe, to prescribe you. Uh, see. It was a joke. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, you know, I mean, because that's kind of like borderline what I do at night. I just couldn't, I couldn't do that on the side. It, I know. It was a I'm side just, hustle. That, that you know, it's like nah. All I the dopers do that. you've run across and all the drama. It's just it's kind of just inside baseball joke there. So. Yeah. So but, anyway, so we found. Um, but but yeah. with that being said, I do have a built-in client base. If I did decide to go that way, <laughs> dude, I don't know what's I don't know what's wor worse, old whores or old dopers. I don't know. <laughs> well, look. They both have their place because a lot of dopers don't get old and, well, a lot of whores get old early, but they don't last long. So if you're an old whore or an old doper, hats off to you. Hey, do you remember, uh, I don't know if we talked about this on pod or not, you were asking me, there was a girl who used to see she worked at night and uh, didn't she hang herself? Yeah, she was a uh, a stripper slash whore. Um, God, I knew her for years. Yeah, and um, and yeah, she was a you know uh, you know did the local strip joints and gave erotic massages. You know, rub rubbing a tug and you know the whole the whole stripper whore gambit. And <laughs> and when I first met her when she was younger, and this is probably. 15 years ago. Yeah. She was a pretty attractive girl, you know? 
And then, of course, you know, the boob jobs came and the implants and then, uh, then you know, the tattoos mm -hmm. and, you know, and the piercings, you know, you know, the, the, the standard course. I mean, you know, you were the vice thing for years. You know what that's all about. Yeah. And, and about, I want to think a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago, thereabouts. Um, I hadn't seen her in a long, long time, you know, because I'd run into her on occasion. And I ran into a mutual friend. Um, when I say mutual friend, a person who, who knew me and knew her as well, and was saying, oh, man, hey, did you hear? Anyway, she ended up hanging herself in her house. Yeah, you were telling me about her and asking if I knew her, and didn't quite then like he showed me a picture and I was like, you know what? I think I may have seen her around before. You I'm I'm sure you you've seen her around back when you were working. Yeah, I mean I've been gotta realize, I mean, I retired in two thousand and eight. So it's yeah. been twelve years ago. Yeah, but but back then when you retired, she was highly active. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I think she's not active anymore. No, I, I think I well, you know what? She probably voted in twenty twenty. Um, <laughs> wow! And of course, she voted for Joe and Cameltoe. Oh, dude, did you um, do you know who you know who um, Louder with Crowder is? Oh yeah, yeah. So I didn't watch it, but I guess he released a headline. So I don't completely know his situation, but um, I guess he maybe he lives in Michigan. And maybe he lived someplace else or moved, and so anyway, he, he um, you know, he, he's a, you know, he's a citizen, right? Like he, you know, he, uh, you know, he pays his taxes, he has a mortgage, he has a business, he has employees. You know what I'm saying? The dude, yeah. the citizen, and so he registered to vote, and you know, like we all did in 2020, and he was, I don't, for some reason, I don't know if he got a piece of paper or if he was suspicious. But he checked with his previous address and his previous voting district. Yeah. And it still showed him as active at that address and it showed he voted. So he's like, hey, everybody, I voted <laughs> twice. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> See, and, and this is the kind of shit that just it, it, it fucking amazes me because – you know, you still hit there, sit there and listen to the news media and, and all these uh, left-wingers go, oh, see, there is, there is no proof of any type of fraud in this election. And it's like, well, how much fraud do I have to dump on your damn dining room table before you to sit there and say, okay, yeah, maybe there was some fraud. Maybe not enough to sway the election, but yeah, okay, there is proof that there was some voter shenanigans going on. But... They sit there and say, absolutely no proof, none whatsoever. And it's like, dude, I'm not even in this field. I'm not an expert in it. And I can give you examples of voter fraud that are just not disputable. Yeah. But and the thing and is, Steven Crowder just came up with some voter fraud right there. Yeah, the thing is, look, I, I, I mean, people, I, let me get the thought out everybody before you go ballistic and issue a fatwa i have i have i'm of multiple minds on some of this okay like circumstantially we can look at this and it's like okay do you really think you know joe biden got more votes than barack obama did in 2008 legitimately that's insane and no, he, you're right. It is insane. That's insane on its face. And then there's also, you know, when, when Barack Obama and I, we talked about this before the election, you know, presidents do not generally get more votes when they run for reelection. In modern times, the only president that increased his voter base on uh, his second term was Ronald Reagan. Well, Donald Trump, I think, got 10 million more votes. I mean, at the current rate, I think they said he got... 10 million more votes than he did in 2016 and, and he didn't win. It's like, that's odd. And then, then circumstantially it's again, this is all circumstantial. Okay. If Donald Trump got smoked, if he got wiped out, it's like, if, if they, everyone voted against him, 
how come the Republicans picked up a bunch of seats? How come the Republicans took a, a couple of the toss up, you know, a bunch of the toss up, yeah. you know, districts, the purple district yeah. or supposedly, you know, toss up. They even gained seats in California. You know, it's like yeah. this. Is, it's 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 the numbers don't add up properly. It's bizarre because also Donald Donald Trump's approval rating among Republicans was the highest it's ever been. Like he had 95 percent Republican voters, but somehow those are voters split the tickets. I mean, you know, Joe Biden has a rally and there's more Trump supporters there heckling him than there are Biden supporters. But yet Joe Biden comes out with 80 million freaking votes. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm, I'm just I'm just, I, you know, OK, maybe Joe Biden did win this election fairly. Maybe he did. But to sit there and say there's absolutely no voter fraud is just a bold faced lie to the public. And it's a slap in anyone who's halfway intelligent face. Well, I have two I have two legitimate fears right now. Look, OK, I, circumstantially, I just laid out the case that this doesn't make a lot of sense. The more circumstantial evidence you get, forget, you know, we've all heard the stories about the vote, you know, the spike, 600,000 votes show up in the, whatever in the morning and then like 30 percent increase all at the same time in Arizona. You, you know, forget all of those. You know, that some of those are stories. Some of those may be true. They may not be true. I'll readdress those in a minute. Right now, my fear is the mainstream media, Republican and Democrat, they seem to be very uninterested in even looking at this story. And it's remind, I call this the Washington, D.C. two-step. And this is kind of how it works. And we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll use Hillary Clinton as an example, okay? The Hillary Clinton email thing and the Benghazi thing. It Basically, it's deny, 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 deny. And they deny, they deny it for so long. The most obvious things. They deny it, deny it, deny it. Then eventually it gets to the point, well, it's old news. Let's just move on. It's too late now. Let's just move forward. Can we just move ahead? And like you saw that kind of stuff with the IRS too and Lois Lerner, which really pissed yeah. me off. You know, yeah. it was, you're crazy. This didn't happen. You know, this is, you're, you're full of shit. And then it was, you know, they figured out they they figured out Lois Lerner was involved in this, and then it was we're gonna have an investigation, and we're gonna you know, well we're gonna have uh, I want I want our computer records, I want all our records. Oh, we don't have those records. Oh, we don't. Well, okay, well we do have those records. Oh, that's great. And then, okay, now then it turns out we don't have the records. They were deleted. Her it turns out well, after she left, her uh, her computer was deleted. It was perfectly normal because even though you told us to save them. Just because of some snafu, because it's a bureaucracy, they were deleted. And then it was, okay, well, Congress denied, denied, denied. Congress is like, we want her computers and her hard drives so we can forensically we can forensically go ahead and go through them and see what we can recreate off of her hard drive so we can have an investigation. IRS is like, no problem. We'll do that for you. They come back and go, oh, turns out those hard drives were shredded. Yeah. And it's this kind of like goes on and on and on and on. And then eventually it's like, yeah, you know, come on. Are we still talking about this? Yeah. And I, that's kind of scary. <clears throat> yeah, it is. I, it really is. And the, uh, the, Fox what's News the, uh, not interested in it as well. Well, okay. Um, what's the name of the, uh, the, the voter server that's like stationed over in Germany or something like that? Uh, See, the thing is, like, I hear some of this shit, and I don't know what's true and what's not true. Here's a perfect example, okay? And I haven't looked into it. I've been busy. You've been busy. But I remember the night of the election or the next day, we heard stories in Arizona and there was videotape of people getting all wrapped around the axle of when you fill out your ballot, don't use a felt tip or whatever marker, use a ballpoint pen. And yeah. the argument was that there were poll workers giving out felt tip markers and not using ballpoint pens, and that would foul the vote. 
It was just. I, we, yeah, I heard that as well. Yeah. Yeah, we heard it and we heard it. And then it was, there's no way, that's not true. And then I heard, and then like a couple days later, the media, some of they were like, well, you know what? The Board of Elections, they came out and they said that, uh, and no, um, it, the machine reads, reads felt tip markers perfectly fine. And I was like, okay, you know, that, that, okay. That yeah, was one of those things people got all wrapped around the axle on and it became, it almost became like a hysteric thing. I was like, okay. Well, then like the next day or day after that, the GOP filed a lawsuit in Arizona complaining about the marker thing. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Is this real or not real? Is the marker thing? If you used a fucking marker, did your fucking ballot count? I haven't, no, I don't think anybody has an answer. <clears throat> no one's got an answer and no one's looking into it either. No one's looking into it. And it's, there's that shit is happening everywhere. And that's scary. Yeah. Well, now I heard that those, uh, you know, the servers that were designed in, uh, I guess, like, I don't know, Venezuela or something like that. I forget what they. Yeah. It's Dominion is the company. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, there's connection now, to Venezuela. Then there was a connection to Germany and. Well, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I don't have any information. This is just a headline that I, that I came across today. I've been busy doing a bunch of stuff, so I didn't delve into it. But now I heard the Dominion servers are missing. Again, don't know if that's true. It's just a headline I read, and I haven't delved into it. But it's interesting if all of a sudden, the, you know, with all the bullshit that they were talking about that, if all of a sudden those servers become you know, disappear. It's like, okay. Yeah. And you know, and the thing is, we talked about that in the company group chat. I said, cause it's just like Hillary's computers. It's just like the IRS. I said in, in, in the group chat, you watch company, you know, States like Pennsylvania. I hate Pennsylvania. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you're a fine state Pennsylvania, but I said, and I, we, I pissed off a lot of listeners in Pennsylvania by shitting on Pennsylvania. And look where they're at. And I called it. I knew you fuckers were going to be, it's going to be a goddamn nightmare because you have a bunch of these union sons of bitches that basically take over these cities and dominate your, your, your local politics. And I was like, you wait and you'll see like the voting rolls. They're like, oh, because of, you know, we have to maintain the privacy of the vote. We went ahead and shredded all the, all the ballots. Like, there'll be a mad rush to get rid of this data. Yes. Well, I don't know if we talked on pod, but we talked in private about the uh, <clears throat> the union worker that I know that went to vote. And um, when they showed up at the polls, it says, oh, we show you already voted with a mail-in ballot. Or you were sent a mail-in ballot. Yeah. And I they're like, uh, oh, and the u- the retired union worker who was sent to mail-in ballot, his wife, who is not a union worker, also was sent to mail-in ballot. So what they had to do is they're like, well, we didn't vote with a mail-in ballot. We vote in person. So they had to, they set them aside and they had to fill out a separate ballot that they sealed. And, and a, provision, they had to see a provisional ballot. That they yes. Check later. Yeah, okay. And and they're like, uh, yeah, we didn't request a mail-in ballot. We don't do mail-in ballots. We vote in person. And, oh, the union took it upon themselves to, uh, uh, I don't know if they got a mail-in ballot and threw it away or whatever the case is, but the point is, when they went to vote, they're like, oh, we're showing you were sent a mail-in ballot. And here's the thing. you know, If you're listening to that, you're like, well, what's the big deal? Okay, if you or someone who would demographically listen to this podcast and you were to show up at your polling station and you were, you're there to vote. It's your day. You, if here's the thing, if you vote more than once, it's a felony and you show up to vote and they go, Hey, um, we show you were mailed a, uh, a mail in ballot. You requested a mail in ballot. And you're like, no, I didn't. And you find out that Wayne LaPierre and the NRA requested a, a, a ballot in your name and had it sent to your house. Or Lord knows what they did with it. It's like it piss you off. It's crazy bullshit. Oh yeah, you know. Um, well, there's been some talk. You know, I don't want to make this all about the 
the the the whatever but you know um no we get we got a lot of stuff to talk about too so. yeah so but um <clears throat> you know i guess the trump campaign has filed something in wisconsin claiming 200,000 votes are invalid because of the way i guess mail in ballots were handled i guess some guy showed up today on television i haven't actually watched any of this showed up and he said that uh he personally took between 180 and 200 and some thousand mail-in ballots, he delivered them from New York to Pennsylvania. And I guess he's a USPS worker, and they took him to some facility that supposedly is not even prepared to even accept or handle ballots. Like, it, if it all works out to be true, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, look, here's... The get back to the media and the get back to, you know, like the media is just like, let's just go along to get along. You know, ju- they're, they're trying to create momentum for the Biden quote administration. We're just all going to pretend you can't stop it. You know, this is all, every, this is all conspiracy theory. You're all just sore losers. This is all happening and the wheels are turning. And there, there is some, there is some validity to that, that tactic because it is, you can't stop it. Um, but I my train of thought just went out of my head. It is one thirty. Well, the, the the closer we get to December twentieth, the harder it is to stop. Yeah, uh, I, it's. I mean, it's look. Come December twentieth, the electoral college will meet. They'll vote. Um, I mean, they're November fourteenth, but uh, it, I thought it was the twentieth. It oh, could be. The oh, 14th. oh, here's my oh, here's my point. Because there's so much. Uh, uh, momentum with a quote, a Joe Biden administration now, like this is happening. Like, you know, we've called this that, okay. I don't know. I, you hear like, okay, they could invalidate a number of States, not certify the votes. If, 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 if somebody doesn't get 270 electoral votes, if there's not enough electoral votes in the election, you know, like let's say Pennsylvania gets knocked out because it's not certified or is declared invalid and Wisconsin is declared invalid. And for some reason that keeps either Trump or Biden from getting 270 yeah. and it goes to the house. And here's the thing, each member of the house or each state gets one vote. It's not members of the house, it's each state. And you know, 30 of the 30 something of the 50 states are controlled by Republicans. And so the argument is that in theory Trump could win. Mm-hmm. But it's like I don't know if I think there's enough Republicans with enough balls to take it away from Biden. If if <clears throat> the media in Washington and the establishment and everybody's like Biden won, Biden won, don't you dare, don't you dare. And even while I'm saying that, like I don't think, like you know, the Supreme Court. I even doubt even if Donald Does Trump, it- Donald Trump could have videotape. Of them printing ballots, making shit up. Like they could have them on, like they could have stone cold, they could have DNA evidence. And I do not know if I believe that the Supreme Court has the balls to say, hey, there's something going on here. We're invalidating Pennsylvania and we're invalidating Wisconsin. And this has to go to the, this has to go to the House. I, I just don't think John Roberts is going to fucking do that. I, you know, I can't even argue with that. I really can't. You you bring up a valid point because here's 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 where I think their mindset is. Okay, with all the bullshit with you know Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and all the crap that we've been you know notice by the way that's all kind of died down. Okay, if they take this away from Joe Biden and give it to Trump, rightfully or wrongfully so, I think they're going to think well it's just going to cause all kinds of crap and riots and looting and bullshit in the United States. So for the the greater good, we'll just give it to Joe. Yeah, so we're going to disenfranchise our entire system mm-hmm. to keep these lunatics from raising hell when you know, it, well, you know, but you know, but it's funny. It's like they're counting on the goodwill of the other side. It's like, you know, if you I mean, look, this is not a good situation for this country because 
if the political system breaks down, if the voting system breaks down, and the legal system breaks down, like if you got, you know, if look, you you can you can wherever you're, if you're at home, you're listening to this. Look, you're you're a hippie. You can vote to have your sheriff be uh, a jack wagon who doesn't arrest anybody, and you can have your your county prosecutor or your district attorney, wherever it is you live. And, you know, nobody ever goes to jail and peace and love, the summer of love. And all of this, you, you can certainly do that. And these people that, you know, they can implement those policies, but eventually what will happen is enough violence is committed against the citizens of an area. If you think Antifa is, is doing a good job as a militia, you wait until pissed off citizens decide to set up their own vigilante militia groups or their own you know, fucking law. I mean, like this, this does not end well. No, no, it really doesn't. You know, and all you have to do is look at countries in like South America and Colombia, like, you know, like they, they became so corrupt, like either the politicians or the drug cartels or the communists, you know, with, you know, all that kind of stuff. You literally have secret, vigilante groups going around the country going, well, they're paying off the judges, they're paying off the police, they're doing all this. So we're just, you know, we know Pablo Escobar is guilty. So we're just going to start killing his people. So in the middle of the night, there's just a machine gun attack or a car bomb or assassination. And it's the right wing people who are trying to make, take up the slack because law enforcement isn't doing their job. This is This could very easily happen in this country. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to think it can, but we could turn into Brazil. We could turn into Venezuela. And that's not a crazy crackpot idea. I mean, it's a slippery slope, but once you start sliding down it, it's hard to stop. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is you'll have, you know, when a country, like look at the first American Civil War. And like I've talked about this, I think, on pod. You know, if, if they're truly civil war is really in the air, what will happen is people will migrate or vote with their feet. So like, you know, if you're someone who's from the Midwest and you live in New York and you feel like this is getting bad, you'll move home. You'll go move and live in a free state because if we're going to have a big fight, you'd rather have the fight in your home state with your family and your friends and the people that you that that have you have something to believe in as opposed to just holding out New York as an individual. And yeah. people will move and flee bad states into free states. And you'll see this that's where the front lines will be. That's where things will break up. And it's it's not it's 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 terrible. I mean it's just None of this is going to go like, look, wait, I had a guy, dude, I had a guy emailing me yesterday and he was like, he's all pissed off. He's rage. He's rage emailing. And he's like, I mean, he is thoroughly pissed off. And he's like, we need to hang Hillary Clinton for treason and we need to hang Barack Obama for treason. And I'm ready to have a fucking war and, you know, all of this nasty shit. And it's like, dude, I, you know. Antifa's never showed up outside of my door. And I guarantee you, if they show up at my door, I'm going to finish it. But if you think I'm going to leave where I live and go look for these fools, you don't understand how anything works. Yeah. You know, and it's also, it's interesting, like this guy, you talk to him and his phrasing, and he talks about they have to rise up. They have to fight back. They, it's like, Oh, he it's, he's not he's not putting himself on the front line. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Like he he talks, he, he doesn't realize he's doing it. And I certainly wasn't trying to encourage him. Be like, well, why don't you go out there and fuck shoot somebody, Mister Badass? I mean, I certainly don't want to do that because the fucker yeah. could do it. Yeah. But it's like it's interesting. It's like he wants other people. It's like you know, I told him he wants other people to like solve this problem. It's like, and I said, look, dude, what you need to do is you need to think about local politics. I said, whoever's president doesn't really affect you. 
I said, you're getting, you're treating this shit like it's a freaking football game. Like you're just jersey wearing here. Trump jersey versus a Biden jersey. And the reality is you need to get involved in your local politics. Who's the sheriff of your county? Who's your uh, county administrators? Who's the prosecutor of your county? Because the thing is, who's the mayor of your city? Who's the mayor of your town? You look at Portland, you look at Seattle, you look at St. Louis, and if you have a fucked up sheriff and you have a fucked up prosecutor and a fucked up mayor, they can fuck your whole goddamn program up yeah. by just prosecuting the wrong people and letting the wrong people walk. Yeah. But this guy wants to fucking have this LARPing fantasy that he's going to go out and somehow fight this war. And it's like, dude, the war is at your house. The war is in your neighborhood. Yeah, look, Punisher doesn't exist. Everyone wants to wear the Punisher skull on their fucking guns and their shirts and their Punisher patches on their fucking uh, load-bearing vest and all that crap. But in the real world, when the shit really comes down to it, Punisher doesn't exist. Yeah, I don't even. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. But here's the thing. Like, here's a question. I, I get a chance to ask the guy this, but I really, I really wanted to. What I wanted to say was, hey, dude, do you have kids? And if you don't have kids, do you, you know, have nieces or nephews or are there children anywhere in your life, school age children? And I wanted to be like, have you ever read a history book, the textbook, their history textbook out of their school? And I guarantee you the answer is no. Yeah. But here's the thing. You want to go and you want to fight the commies in New York and hang Hillary Clinton. But you don't even realize what they're teaching your kids a block from your house with your taxpayer money. It's like, why don't you get involved in your school board? Why don't you get involved in your local elections? Why don't you, why don't you become the person – you you know that that society needs instead of like wanting to fucking I want to hang people for treason. Okay, well let me let me bring up this. Um, this is going back to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Okay, now if you go out on the street and ask people who signed the Declaration of Independence, they're going to be able to give you a handful of names, and there's a reason for that. Okay, the handful of names, you know, John Hancock, Benjamin Franklin, blah, 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 you know, they're going to go with the, the, the names that everyone's familiar with. And the reason they're familiar with them is because these people survived the Revolutionary War and became very successful afterwards. But there's a lot of signers of the Declaration of Independence. And if you actually look into the, if you research the history of every signer, about 80% of the signers of the Declaration of Independence did not survive the Revolutionary War very well. The British went after them. They took their properties. They took their means of life, um, you know, their, their means of income. And a lot of them lost their lives just because they signed a document. Or a lot of them died penniless. Yes, that's what I'm saying. After the, the, after, after the revolution was over, they, uh, they, 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 they never recovered. Yeah, exactly. So, so bear that in mind. You know, and a lot of people don't even understand, don't even realize that because they don't really teach that and whatnot. But the thing is, bear in mind that if you light the fuse, you may not come out of this a winner, even if your side wins in the long run. Not everybody gets to be John Rambo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what? Not screw that. Not everyone gets to be, uh, you know, uh, Ben Franklin or Hancock or, you know, John Adams or those guys. You know, I mean, someone's someone's got to take it on the chin. Hey, kind of related and not related. Uh, the Bonhomme Richard, the Bonnie Richard, the aircraft carrier, which or the original one was. Uh, the good man Richard was, I think, it, well, I think it was paid for by Ben Ben, or was it Lafayette? Yeah, one, of the, sure. one of the yeah. one of the was it Laf was it uh, was it Lafayette or was it Franklin that paid for that? But uh, um, you know, I don't recall. Well, the uh, the current Bonhomme Richard, the aircraft carrier that caught on yeah. fire at the dockside. Yep, yeah, I heard about it. The Navy has declared that they're going to have to scrap it. It's gone. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, you know, the first American carrier law since World War II. It's 
you'd want to be technical about it. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Joe the welder is not sleeping well tonight. Yeah. They um, the last I heard that uh, I think it, uh, I think the fire started uh, you know uh, in a vehicle storage area, like in the bottom of the ship somewhere. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's you know just. Yeah, it's it sucks, but yeah, the the, bon, the Bonnie Dick burned up, and that's twenty twenty. I mean, that's just you know, that's just it's been a hell of a it's been a hell of a year. So, hey, all right, let's you know what we've been going for a while. Let's talk about what we really wanted to talk about. You okay, um, you're probably going to want to talk about the uh, the Sig, the Sig Cross. Oh man, um, so before, so like. So before we get started, like the everybody out there, Freeze is a big Sig fanboy, but you know Freeze is not really a tactical guy. And I don't like before today. I don't think you even knew what the cross was. No, not really, because I never really paid any attention to it. Because it, you know, again, I, I love Sig. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fanboy, but. I really wasn't familiar with Sig Cross because it's just not really in my wheelhouse. Uh, it's it's not the kind of thing that I'm really interested in. Although I kind of am now, but mm -hmm. yeah. But um, but I mean, looking at this rifle, I see so so many really awesome things on it. But well, there is an issue, a bad issue. And the issue is, <laughs> well, it's a problem with the trigger. <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes the trigger will send a round down range. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes when you release the trigger, it sends a round down range. Sometimes when it doesn't go click bang, when you touch the bolt handle, it sends a round down range. Um, and not saying it's going to happen on every gun, but uh, the particular uh, gun that, that, was tested um you know so you this, can say it like their youtuber nothing fan okay released the video and if anybody wants to i think you can if you zoom ahead to about the 26 sec, the 26 minute mark you yeah. can start to see where he shows the issues and I, i'm telling you what now granted uh most guys that take their gun to the range and shoot you know you know 10 20 30 40 rounds through it um may or may not have experienced this issue. I mean, nothing fancy goes out into the desert and he runs the guns hard, which he should, you know, you and, know, um, the, you know what I want to, I want to, I want to give a, I want to give props to, to the Lieutenant Colonel because look, he, he's loquacious, you know, he, he's long winded, yeah. like, you know, like there was a joke online in the comment section. It said, "I used to know a guy that watched nothing fancy videos, but he died of old age." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Look, his his videos are are long, mm -hmm. and you know, um, look, it, by most standards, and, and that's fine. The, the thing with nothing fancy is a lot of the high speed load. I don't. I don't think a lot of the actual shooters dislike nothing fancy i really don't i think the fanboys that like to think of themselves as shooters or like to be fanboys of shooters like to make fun of nothing fancy or look down on him because he's not a night elf operator mohawk 47 dude or whatever that's supposed to be but if you look at nothing fancy objectively that guy is living the life that most people that profess that they they are tactical would want to live. He that Agreed. dude that dude shoots. Agreed. Yeah, no he one's does. Saying he's Jerry Michalik. No one's saying. I mean, I I mean, look, I'm not I'm not going to say too much. Like I'm fairly confident I could out shoot on fancy with a handgun. But the dude shoots. He gets out there. He shoots his gun. And he runs them all the time, and you got to respect that. The guy's got trigger time, you know, oh, yeah. as, as, as opposed to keyboard time. Oh man, I tell you what, I mean, he definitely shoots. I mean, there's no doubt about it, mm -hmm. you know. And and he puts up, 
he puts up excellent material. If you, know? you if if you if you have forty to ninety minutes to you know watch a video, <laughs> well, no, that that's true, and 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 you can you can sit there and say, well, his videos are long. I mean, I started listening to nothing nothing fancy years and years ago, back when we were doing T-shirts, because when I'm sitting there, you know, working in production, I just have his videos running in the background. I didn't really watch a lot of them. I listened to a lot of them, and it was good information, and it worked for me. Because, well, it was a 45-minute to an hour video, and that means you could work and not have to stop and start another video. Hello, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah um, no, that that's absolutely that's absolutely 100% true. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, and um and it wasn't it wasn't just silly goofy videos. It, they were videos that I was interested in. You know, even if I wasn't particularly interested in the gun he was talking about, it still gave me uh some pretty decent knowledge on the gun and and, you know, and hell, I like learning about all different guns, whether I'm interested in owning that particular gun or not. Do you remember, here's the thing, and a lot of people today don't really realize how big Nut and Fancy is, um, how much of an effect he's had on the firearms community. And I guarantee you forgot about this freeze. Do you, when, he, when we first saw him on Fancy, <laughs> he, like, he would do these videos, and you wouldn't see his face, which obviously I'm not. I mean, I'm not the guy complaining about that, but um, like there'd be a video, and he'd be like, he'd do his tabletop videos, and he would have knives or guns, and it'd be a camera, and basically you'd see the product in his hand. Yeah. And like he would have like Nomex gloves on. Or tactical gloves or some kind of yeah, glove. and you know I remember like we were just like what in the flying fuck is this? And if you go on YouTube now and you'll see some guy who has he's got no credibility. He doesn't really have any. He's, he either has he doesn't have a resume that he can front on the internet. He doesn't have any experience or skill that he can front like running guns. But he likes guns, and he wants to do gun videos. They will, they will literally default to tabletop, and it'll be like no max gloves. Like if I see a guy doing, if I see another video of a guy sitting in a house with some kind of like no max gloves on, <laughs> holding a gun, it's just like oh god! Like people <sighs> don't realize that this is this is like a meme of a meme. It's. But, so know. the next video I do, I'm going to be wearing Nomex gloves. Yeah, you're going to need some kind of like, you know. Um, hey, oh, you know what? Side note. Yeah. Going through stuff, I found. Do you remember the lead glo- the the leather gloves I bought that had powdered lead in the knuckles for fighting? Oh my god! Yeah, I do remember. God, I that's going those. back years. I found those. Um, I found those. Uh. A couple of days ago, uh, in the armory, uh, unpacking boxes, <laughs> they're on the they're on a workbench in the in the gun room, and it's like, um, holy shit, you know, it's like I, like I remember I was working for somebody, and I I had those, and I got in so much trouble for, <laughs> for having those. They were like, don't you ever fucking wear those again? <laughs> I was like, what? Fuck it, it's awesome. You know, I got a black belt. I got the fucking, fucking lead fucking gloves. <laughs> I can't believe I still have them. Ah, uh, yeah, that's awesome. So I <laughs> mean, I need to do a tabletop video with my powdered lead gloves. <laughs> God, you probably still have a sap somewhere laying around too. Um, I did find a pair of brass knuckles. Yeah, really nice brass knuckles too. I never yeah. used those. I bought them, you know, I tried them a little bit. It wasn't really, you know, being a martial artist, I mean, I didn't need that kind of goofy shit. I just realized it was just easier for me to just, you know, bra- brass knuckles actually kind of hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, a lot of people, you know, they, they see brass knuckles used in movies, but I'll tell you what, put on a pair of brass knuckles and hit a heavy bag really hard. Yeah. They hurt. Yeah. It wasn't, 
it was a theory and you know i just they were not they were expensive and also the we also the thing with brass knuckles too is a lot of times as i recall like even having them was they were it was causing problems like it was it was a controlled item and there you know something mm-hmm. you cross state lines with them and we were just a con and it wasn't like these things were just goofy fucking they just attract more attention Mm-hmm. So we, I did. I mean, I, I I threw them in a box, and we. Yeah, didn't. I, I I threw out my brass knuckles with my nunchucks. Well, see, but I, dude, I've heard you talk about. I mean, I used to teach. I have nunchucks, and I have all that shit. Um, yeah. See, the thing is, I'm joking, and you're not. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no, never mind. So um, anyway, back to the back to nothing fancy. So he did this thing with the cross rifle, and it got all the all the hoopla and it even made us kind of look at it and um, yeah. they issued a recall. And so freeze and I are having this conversation. Freeze has not really heard of the cross rifle. And what was really interesting is freeze. He had no idea what the fix was and Q and Kevin Brittingham. And for those of you that don't know, I mean, I'm not going to rehash the whole thing, but there's a lot of people saying, that Sig copied the uh, uh, cues, the the fixed rifle to make. Oh yeah, they're, they, I, I'm flat out saying it here on podcast. If you look at those two rifles side by side, you know uh, which came first, the, you know the Q or the cross, or not the Q, the the, the Q fix. fix. The, Q, the fix by Q became out two years ago. Yeah, and I, I'm telling you what. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind Sig copied it. Yeah, I don't think it's exact a direct copy. No, it's not. It's it's there's enough of a difference, I guess, to where they can't get in trouble. Yeah, I don't know if there's but, not. There's conceptually they're very very similar guns, but here's but here's the interesting thing. This is what I really like about this, and it, it kind of goes full circle to some of the parts of this conversation, like nothing fancy and 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 like the the fanboys and people who like hero worship, like you know, like. I mean, everybody likes, you know, like the Chris Kyle thing. Everybody was real proud of Chris Kyle, you know. Yeah. Like everybody, sure. we all, we get it. We all get it. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like the guy that runs Q, his name is Kevin Brittingham. And Kevin Brittingham is not a military guy. He's not a, um, he's not a tactical guy. Kevin Brittingham is about my age. Um, he's a skateboarder. Um, he's kind of a cool guy. He's a real smart guy. He's an avid hunter. And he is as far removed from the tactical world as you can get. He's all about practical. He's about lightweight. He's about, um, uh, uh, quality. Um, he's not about, um, he's not about, uh, like this high speed, low drag, crazy bullshit. Now he's good at marketing, but he, he's he he designs guns based off of things he likes, which is being a hunter. You know, suppressed. He basically is responsible for a blackout. Uh, he's responsible for a lot of suppressor technology. He built. You know, he built this uh this AR this AR uh. uh sub gun called the uh honey badger that was so good in 300 blackout it was so small some of the tactical some of the tier one tactical teams they bought that gun they used the gun and it's what's so interesting is what people think the tier one guys the people that actually shoot guns should be like or want or is important to them is not true they want practical lightweight effective you know it, it's interesting because freeze is not a tactical guy freeze is not a not not ninja. freeze is not a military like you're a military collector a military guy but you're not like a modern tactical guy nope but modern you, tactical stuff i mean i i think it's cool i like it but i don't really show any interest in it and I, I just, you know, some of it turns you off, but it's interesting. The guy who runs Q, who is probably considered one of the most successful suppliers of high end tactical equipment to some of these quote tier one units that everybody worships, 
he's not like Larry Vickers. He's not like Mr. Ninja, whatever guy. He's like you, Freeze. He yeah. literally, you two think about shit very similarly. And it's interesting that you don't even know who he is because you're not even, you don't care. No, because I don't really, uh, you know, follow the things in his wheelhouse. You know, like I'm familiar with the honey badger. Don't give two shits about the honey badger, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I, I just don't care about it. I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's just don't care. It's not my thing. But his, his, but even the honey badger for him, he likes short, lightweight guns that can be suppressed, that pack a punch, or he can shoot deer and shoot game. And it, it's just, it's really just, it's, it's, it's interesting how the universe lines things up to the, the reality versus the perception. And I, I think that I always just thought that was super interesting. No, it is. It is. It's very interesting. I think you and Kevin Brittingham would be fast friends. I think you two have a lot in common. Oh, we probably would. I mean, um, other than the fact that he's worth about $25 million and, and I'm worth about twenty five dollars. So you know, I mean, so, you know, <laughs> you know, you know uh, if if you go to the restaurant, you'll be ordered a glass of water. With him, you know, while he's eating his Kobe beef. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have another glass of ice water, please? Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah. So anyway, so we were looking at the well. The, well, hopefully, uh, if we if if we were fast friends, he would say, "Excuse me, you can bring him a Coke Zero." On me, the Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. You know, it, it's look. I mean, I like the stuff he does, um, and I think it's it's awesome. Um, like I said, it just I don't really pay enough attention. Maybe I should, but I don't really pay enough attention to that side of things because. I don't, you know, I, it doesn't interest me enough. I well, mean, it, I shouldn't say it doesn't interest me enough. I do find all that stuff interesting. It's just not my thing. And I look at other areas. Well, you one, know? Of the, one of the things he does, um, and again, this is because again, he's not a tactical guy. So he, you know, he'll come up with a product. Like think of the names he comes up with the fix for this bolt action rifle, the honey badger. You know, for this this AR gun that the military's bought, because Honey Badger don't care. He's got suppressors, dude. He's got a suppressor called the uh, Trash Panda, and when you buy one, it's got a raccoon in a royal like royal outfit, like on the box. There's another one called the Thunder Chicken, and I mean, it's just like he's so <laughs> irreverent and so it, not tactical. It also says the guy's got a hell of a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, it does. He does, but he doesn't. Um, he can be he can be testy. You know what I mean? But he does. I think he. I don't think he takes himself too seriously. But he, you don't walk up and stick your finger in his face. He'll fucking <laughs> have it. He'll, you know, he, he's not. He's not a. He is. He 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 can be friendly, but uh, I I don't think I don't think you should take that for granted. Um, but he's, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I kind of like the guy. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know him, but, uh, yeah. it's been fun for you to get educated for the last, say, 12, 15 hours, the cross, the fix, Hugh, Kevin Brittingham, and all of this stuff that you, you had no idea. No, I had no idea. But you know, you, you do know what a thunder chicken is, right? Is that your oh, jam? What's that? Is that the is that the bird on the Trans Am? That's fire chicken. What's a yeah, thunder man. chicken? A, a thunder chicken is a southern term for uh, a male turkey. I'm from the south, and I'm not familiar with that term. But I wasn't a big hunter. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a uh, um, uh, yeah, it's it's a term for a uh, you know a tom, a male turkey. I did, not, I did not know that. I'll be honest with you. I like I confession time. Like all the names for turkeys, I don't even understand them. I can't. <laughs> I like, hey, look, there's a turkey. There's a female. There's a big male. There's a little male. That's about all I know. Well, I, you know what? And there could be other. There could be other definitions for a thud. That's where I know thunder. Well, Tom from. and Jake and all this. I don't even know half that shit. Means. Well, you know, you know, I mean. 
you know, toms when they're calling in, you know, the uh, the 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 female turkeys, you know, they make all the, you know, the the calls and shit like that. They just, I mean, like I said, there could be other meanings to it, and maybe it's a um, uh, something. Maybe he is thinking of a totally different definition. I don't know. No, but, I'm, sure, you know I'm sure he is. So, you know, but um, but yeah, that's that's the um, uh. That's where I I recognize the term from. Not that that means anything. That's just a little piece of trivia. Yeah, I mean, you know? I, I did not know that. I mean, you know, a lot of those hunting phrases. I just, you know, I I'm a I'm a baby hunter. I mean, I don't. I'm not a big hunter. Like, you know, I'd like to be. Like, I'm getting more interested in it. But, you know, I barely know. I mean, I know how to shoot guns, obviously, but I'm not. You know. Well, I tell I tell you what's kicking my butt right now is uh, I'm dealing with this uh, pinch nerve thing. And, uh, and I've got this monster, monster 10 point buck roaming the woods behind the house here that I so desperately want to take, but he, he, I, I couldn't even feel dress the damn thing. If I, if I got him, he's, uh, he's, uh, taunting you, isn't he? He's, uh, he is, uh, well, uh, let me, let me tell you something. Um, Doc's, uh, buck. Yeah, Doc. Doc got a good got a good buck on the on the on the John nineteen eleven ring. Uh, let me let me tell you something. That's a damn nice buck. This buck's bigger. I believe it. Um, and look, Doc's buck uh, is nothing to sneeze at. That's a very very nice buck. Mm -hmm. But I mean, oh man, I want this thing so bad. <laughs> you know, because um, that's just the old you know hunter in me coming yeah. out. But. Officer Mike went to because uh, you know uh, the season was ending and he he was hunting on the range on Saturday. He was like, "Can I hunt? Can I have the?" I'm like, "Yeah, go, good. You know, you're good." Yeah. And so uh, he uh, we were talking. He he you know he he went ahead and shot like a small buck because he wanted to feel it because he just really um look he'll shoot bullwinkle if it comes by. He likes to shoot the big deer. He shot a nice big deer out there last year. Sure. But, um, you know he he shot day, he shot it. Damn nice deer last year. And, and but at the end of the day, he's putting meat in the freezer. Like he, they eat a ton of, they eat a ton that, of it. That, he that's my job. He's just like you. He processes it. He, you know, does all yep. that. Yep. He told me, so he shot a, a little small buck because he just needed to fill his tag. He told me, he said he was out by the, the you know, the 900 impact zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A big wood pile back there. Yep. And there's a, uh, there's a fence line that goes onto someone else's property. Yeah, he was because he was, I guess, back there creeping around and he said he bumped. He called it bumping. He said this giant 10 point buck got up off the hillside on the other side of the fence and ran down into the bottoms. It sits up right up to his like it was it wasn't it was probably within, I don't know, probably 100 feet of our property. Um, and he I guess it was the biggest one he said he's ever seen, I think, out there. Wow. And nice. He, and it survived. uh and you know there because there's all those woods on that one side that mm -hmm, yeah. I suspect there's a lot of deer in, and we just need to go ahead and buy that. So uh, we won't need to put that. Yeah, um, I suspect there is a lot of deer in there. Well, there's a lot of deer in that whole area, you know. And and you know there's some there's some uh, nice there's some nice bucks out there. There really is, you know. But hey, seeing a nice buck and taking a nice buck sometimes are two different things yeah it is yeah <laughs> but you know i mean i'm the same way i mean i don't really trophy hunt for the rack i mean if i see a nice rack i definitely want to take one and i generally don't shoot like the first small buck that comes along early you know, like on opening day because because I always buy, you know, uh, bundle tags anyway and have doe tags. And I'm really out there shooting does for uh, freezer meat, thus the name. Yeah. You know, um, I'm shooting does for the meat because I prefer to eat a doe. And frankly, a big old buck, about the only damn thing it's good for is sausage anyway. You know, um, you know, so. Uh, but, you know, I will take a small buck, you know, just to fill the tag if it's like the last weekend of the season. Well, I'll tell you what. Actually, um, I was speaking to Doc today, um, because you know he shot a buck. You know, he shot his buck at, at the at the at the range. Yeah. And then you know he and Officer Mike they they drug it out and and Mike processed it. And I guess the it was the next night. Um, 
That that deer was what, maybe three, four years old? Oh, yeah, it was probably about, I don't think four. I'm three, thinking three. maybe three, two yeah. and a half, three. Decent sized buck, and uh, they, they, you know, they had the back straps, and they ate them the next mm-hmm. night. Yeah. And uh, Doc was saying the way that Mike, I guess, my, uh, I guess it was the way Mike prepared it, Doc was telling me, he's like, this is probably the best steak I've ever had. He was well, like, I had Morton's. He said, I had Morton's a few months ago, and this was better than that. Well, I mean, you know, the, the best cut of meat on a deer is the loins. Um, and the second best cut of meat is the back strap. And, and generally, if I shoot a big buck, if all I shoot is a big buck, I'll keep the back straps and uh, cut them up into medallions, you know, so I have stakes. But um, if I shoot a couple does, I'll take the back straps. I always keep the loins because, you know, you know, it's the best cut of meat on the deer. But I'll take the back strap on the big buck and I'll grind it with the rest of the deer just to add the best meat into the grind because it gives you a better grind hamburger, whether you're making hamburgers, meatloaf, beef jerky, or whatnot. But if all I have is the one deer, I'm keeping the back straps, <laughs> you know. You know, and you know, I not being an experienced hunter, you know, I always hear different things. It's like, oh, doe meat is the best meat, and buck meat can be kind of gamey. And, 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 and hear Doc talk about how great this backstrap no, was. He was so no. impressed. I'm like, really? <clears throat> okay. A couple things with deer is big bucks, especially the older they are, and if they're in full blown rut, can be gamey. Yes, that is true. Um, no, no disputing that, but that doesn't mean you can't get good meat off of the buck either. And a lot of people that have tried deer meat, if they're not avid hunters and, and anyone listening to this, who is an avid hunter will agree with me. The worst thing you can do is give deer meat to a person who's never cooked it before. And they cook deer meat the way they cook beef. They will screw it up every damn time because you can't cook it like beef. It's different. Yeah, you apparently, apparently, uh, apparently, you and Mike know how to do it. So, um, I was just impressed by that. I was like, "Hmm," it kind of made me hungry. Like the pictures, like we well, to, we I mean, on the website, you know, understand the fillet mignot comes from the backstrap. <laughs> fillet mignot, <don't> stop. <laughs> no, I mean that's part of the backstrap. So I, on, I on, was, on a cat, uh, I was uh, at a uh, a business meeting years ago, and uh, there was this person there from the deep south. And uh, he was like, he would call it the filet. The filet. Oh, I mean, the filet. <laughs> Look, my, my grandmother, who, God rest her soul, died in 2005. She was 100 years old when she died. Yeah. Um, she used to uh, love fillet mignot, and that's what she called it, fillet mignot. Oh. That's, that's why I call it fillet mignot. <laughs> she, 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 she said it exactly the way... She sounded it out. Well, you know what? Big if, if, if that's the way Grandma says it. That's the way it is. No, nobody, as, you, as far as I'm concerned, it's Philip Big Knot because that's yep, yep. I'm always right. So, so uh, I never pass up the opportunity to call a fillet a Philip <laughs> Big Knot. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's going to be about. It's uh, it's it's rolling in on a three o'clock, and I want to go ahead and I want to get a police blotter in. Because I don't want these to be too long. We've been going so long on all these podcasts. But I, this, there, I have, I have a honorable mention, police blotter, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you the, uh, the, 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 the piece de resistance. Okay. So the honorable mention is, I guess there's a church in California, and it's not really a police blotter, but you know, it's an honorable mention. So. I guess in California, there's been a lot of hoot nannies going on about, uh, you know, like liquor stores are considered essential, but churches are not essential. Like you can't go to church, but you can go to the liquor store. Hey, sounds good to me. Yeah, so, hey, don't threaten, <laughs> hey, don't threaten me at a good time, right? So, so you know, so well, there's been a lot of these arguments about um, what businesses can stay open, what businesses cannot. Well, I guess yeah. in California – Strip clubs can stay open, 
right? Wow, really? Uh huh. So like the 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 pot the pot stores can stay open, the strip clubs can stay open. Maybe it's because the strip club serves food. I'm not. I don't know. There's probably some more to the story. So anyway, <laughs> they serve food all right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're a mammal. So, okay, hold on. You're, you're sidetracked. You're you're derail on the police water. So Sorry, <laughs> pastor who couldn't get permission to keep his to keep his church open. So please, loud. please tell me he put a stripper pole in. He turned his church into a strip club so he could stay have Sunday service. Dude, that is awesome. Tell that isn't like sticking it right in the eye. That I'm telling you what that could be a proverb in the Bible. That is so great, um, dude. My hats off to this dude. My hats <laughs> off to him because yeah. why not? I mean, you know. <clears throat> When they when they pass these goofy ass laws, look, I don't care. They're not even laws; they're executive. Yeah, orders. yeah, I, yeah, I know. Um, but when when they pass these these orders, I mean, look, a lot of people in this country are religious and they like to go to church on Saturday or Sunday or whatever days you go, and that's fine. But when you get to the point where you can validate a titty bar over a church, man, there's some serious, serious bottom line issues in that state. Well, you know, like, you know, when the Civil War comes and people flee the the bullshit states to go to the free states, that's going to be one of those things. Okay, so I got to get them please water. This one's pretty good. So, you know, floor, you know, if you ever heard of Florida Man, right? Everyone's heard of Florida Man, right? There's always a Florida Man story. You know, like somebody, like a guy eats somebody's face, like the, you know, oh, like the bath salt bath thing. Salt. And, There's always something yeah. in Florida. So, yeah, this is why I'm so glad in 2020 that, you know, I'm not dating and having to like deal with all of this stuff because this is the stuff that goes on in the dating world in 2020. A woman in Florida, she, her ex-boyfriend she set up a fake dating profile to advertise free meth at her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend's house. Okay, so she's a bitter ex. So Florida woman was arrested for allegedly setting up a dating profile advertising free meth tonight that sent suitors to a romantic rival's house looking for sex. Vanessa Marie... Huckaba, 29. 29. 29? Not a child. 20, Jeez. 20 yeah. freaking nine. Created the, quote, Island Babe 1234 profile on the website Seeking Arrangement. That's in capital letters. I guess that's the actual website. And included the name, photo, cell phone number, and address of a woman who was dating her ex-boyfriend, according to the Miami Herald. Multiple wow. strangers began arriving at the victim's residence, according to the uh, Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Wow. Other, oh, other creeps sent the woman naked photos of themselves. Of course they did. Oh. I'm here for meth and booty. <laughs> hey, that's good. And I don't care which comes first. What kind of dick pic do you have to send to get some of that free meth? Well, all, all I know is I'm using a wide-angle lens on my camera. You know, like all I'm saying is I saw this on the internet. Somebody was talking about um, uh, this girl. She says my nudes. She said she said my nudes look like a uh, uh, look like something from a professional photo shoot. She said, my boyfriend nudes look like something from a crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, I never thought oh. of that like that. Jesus, man. Yeah. Fucking Florida. <laughs> fucking Florida. Well, you know, at least it's not fucking Pennsylvania for once. So uh. this wraps up episode 195 <laughs> of the 1911 podcast. If you want to see any more pictures, stories, or links, if anything we discussed, you can go to our website, john1911.com. That's J O H N 1911.com, where it's all about shooting guns and having fun. I can't breathe. <laughs> Have a good day. See you guys later. <laughs>